My name is Roy Ombati from Nairobi. Uh, my background is in mechanical engineering, so I studied mechanical engineering at the University of Nairobi and now I'm working with 3D printers and 3D printing. My name is Carl Hens. Uh, I'm from Nairobi. Are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I studied mechanical engineering as well. Uh, at the University of Nairobi with, with Roy, we're both schoolmates and classmates. And uh, we are here now doing 3D printing. Decoration, it's going down, down additive manufacturing process uh, where conventionally we're used to subtractive manufacturing processes where um, a product is made from like removal of material from a bigger chunk. But with 3D printing, material is deposited layer by layer. Okay, in this technique of 3D printing, which is called FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling, material is laid down layer by layer. In the same way, you would put like icing on a cake, um, but in a pattern specific to what you want. Um, what we use is plastic, which is the filament we talked about, and then it's uh, heated over here on a hot end, and then extruded in whatever design as the machine moves in all three axes. And with that, you make whatever products you want, um, including this guy who is me, actually. And then uh, these three, which are really cool to look at because they're made from three different types of filament. Most unique, though, is this one, which is made from PET plastic recycled filament, which is what we have here, which is what we will be producing more of as a very affordable rate. Really, the innovative uh, industry in Kenya is. Uh, it's vibrant, but uh, has no platform to be able to showcase most of what they do. And uh, there is a gap between uh, the, in quotes, put in quotes, the Juakali sector, which is basically in English, uh, informal. informal sector, and the formal sector. There's a big gap between the guys doing the hands-on work and uh, the intellects. Uh, so for me, I think if we could bridge that gap, you know, the innovative uh, industry in Kenya will be uh, far away, ahead, far away uh, ahead. Because uh, for me, I've kind of been able to, you know, put together the hands and and the skill, the skill, and then what's in, you know, uh, the knowledge from engineering principles, uh, same as we are uh, all doing. But I think for the guys who are down there in the informal sector, they have lots of experience, you know, in making things work. Which, would, if we could uh, come together and say, let us, you know, work together towards uh, a goal, we we'll actually achieve, you know, uh, achieve more. We got exposed to 3D printing uh, three years ago. Uh, when we were <coughs> still students, you know, from working at the Fab Lab. So, in fact, I forgot to mention. Um, during our time as students, we did a lot of projects at the Fab Lab in Nairobi. Um, so that's where we first got introduced to the first ever 3D printer that came to Kenya. It was, this was in 2012, we got a maker bot. And um, for us, it was just amazing. We got to play with it, do all sorts of cool stuff. And then um, with the 3D, when the 3D printer was donated to us by a UK based charity called Tech for Trade. Um, they introduced a challenge called the 3D 4D challenge, um, which was inviting people from all over the world to um, think of a project, which a social project that leveraged 3D printing technology to address a social need in the in the world. Um, so I was selected as one of the finalists, uh, and then I went I went to London with Harris, who's not here but is part of the team. And we didn't win, but for us that was the beginning of um, our exposure to 3D printing. Um, the project which uh, we did or what do are still doing, but got us to that position was um, trying to make customized shoes for people who have deformed feet as a result of the Jiga menace here in Kenya. So we're trying to do that using 3D printing because with 3D printing you can get like a custom fit which is unique to. Um, whatever design specifications. Main challenges we kept experiencing were the expense. So getting a 3D printer is ridiculously expensive. And also the running cost, the maintenance. In fact, every other time when the maker bot at the university would break down, we'd have to wait for weeks, maybe even 
months for, for the parts to be imported. Another big problem with 3D printing in general is um, the filament, the material that you use to 3D print with. Um, getting that here in Kenya is difficult, uh, it's very expensive also. So we decided, we, we our main focus was to make 3D printing uh, affordable and accessible to the market here in Kenya, to people like us who are users and also anyone else who, you know, so how to so a need for it or could find a way to use it because we also believe um, even 3d printing um, is a very good teaching tool it's a very very good rapid prototyping technique so we feel it has potential in um, Kenyan market so um, with tech for trade we found a way to build a 3d printer from electronic waste and also extrude filament from waste plastic the recycled PET plastic inspiration behind what we're doing is um, basically it's from a social aspect because we want um, our efforts to trickle back down to the people at the bottom of the pyramid. Primarily we're targeting the waste pickers, so the guys who collect waste, because um, the process for making the filament engages them in a big way. They're very big stakeholders in that because they are the ones who will identify, we will train them, but they're the ones who identify the, um, the waste material that we need in particular. They do the cleaning, the sorting, and the crushing and grinding and pelletizing of the plastics, and then give us flakes. Actually, we buy it from them at a price higher than what they would spend, what they would sell it to, to whoever they're doing it right now. And in turn, you know, the plan is to, you know, raise the standards of living and um, hopefully alleviate poverty. So for us, that's that's um, the main thing because even they, well, in our profit margin, they're a significant part of um, what we're trying to do. Also, same thing with 3D printers. Um, again, social, but in a way it's more environmental because we still haven't, in the world over mostly, we still haven't figured out what to do with the electronic waste we generate on a daily basis. So for us, this is one way of doing that. And then, but then no, you can't sell filament without 3D printers, can't, like the two complement each other. That's why we were running the two in tandem. And again, like I said, it's, it's, it's a big cycle that just points back down to the people who collect the waste. So main inspiration is, um, you know, the social aspects, uh, creating jobs um, and fighting poverty. back to what we do as 3D printing. Uh, I believe it's the future is 3D printing because uh, there is no better method as of now to do a quick prototype than using 3D printers in our print technology. And for us, we, we feel like this is the, the present and the future uh, as we do this, this uh, project of ours because uh, we, we look forward to having every home and school having a 3D printer uh, just because to, 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 to spur up you know innovation we need you to you know come up with a concept and uh, try it out and the easier method is to use 3D printing technology which is cheap and faster as opposed to you know conventional manufacturing uh, processes uh, and so we believe that 3D printing is the, the present and they make it future as uh, every you know basic company which you can actually design and the prototype is very different. Uh, and we're looking at how we can able to really improve the technology by having different uh, material sources to be used for printing. But I think that uh, for me, 3D printing is the future. For fun, um, I like to play rugby. So while at the university, I used to play for Min Machine. Uh, since then, I've been busy, but I should be resuming soon. So, yeah, I play rugby. Rugby, not my thing. Uh, in, in my other, you know, life, I I do music. Uh, I'm a bass guitarist, and I professional bass you know, player. He plays all the instruments. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> four, like, four instruments. <laughs> It's just being humble. <laughs> very cool people. Yeah, Creative Garage has, you know, lots of nice people who will 
accept you for who you are <laughs> and yes. yeah and just you know kind of let you do your stuff and give you a platform to also showcase your 